What is going on guys? This is Daniel, and we had a great game last night between the Lakers and the Clippers. While the Clippers were missing Lou Williams and Montrez Harrell, this was still a very close and competitive game. And what I want to focus on in this video is actually the scouting, because we know about the superstars and these two teams are pretty evenly matched. So in the playoff series, it's going to be the details that end up making the difference, and one of those details is coaching adjustments and scouting. So let's get to it. One really interesting area where scouting came to the forefront in this game was the Lakers offense after free throws. And for some background, what the Lakers like to do is get Davis a post touch. So notice here first how the two inside rebounders are Morris and LeBron. And when the Lakers dribble the ball up, notice how Davis is already waiting on the block ready for the post touch. And they'll just throw it into him. And this is their way of making sure Davis gets consistent touches on the block. So that's what the Lakers like to do, and in their matchup in March, the Lakers had some success with this. Here it is after a free throw, and the Lakers will go to Davis on the block, and notice how he can overpower Morris and draw a foul. Later in the first quarter, we see something very similar, so it's after a free throw. And this time, a slight difference, KCP will set a cross screen for Davis first, but it's the same idea. Let's get Davis the ball in the post. Now let's fast forward to yesterday, and in the Clippers' first trip to the line, we see they were immediately prepared with a new strategy for the Davis post-up. So first, Reggie Jackson picks up LeBron full court and pressures him, making it tougher for him to dribble the ball up the court, and Zubat is guarding Davis. Now this isn't the Clippers' full-time matchup, Zubat is too slow to guard Davis on the perimeter, but because the Clippers knew what was coming, for this situation they can put Zubat on Davis and give Davis a bigger body to deal with. So you can see how this was night and day from their defense before. Notice how first, there's no ball pressure on LeBron because Kawhi is on him, which is great for the half court, but Kawhi doesn't want to expend too much energy picking up full court. Then we see that Morris is on Davis, which is their normal matchup, which gives Davis a size advantage, and we see here Zubats was on McGee. So on the first play after the free throw, their new strategy worked. Zubats forced the Davis miss. Now on the second play, they kind of messed up. Jackson does his job and applies pressure to LeBron, but Noah was subbed in for Zubats. So now as the center, Noah should switch on to Davis, but him and Morris didn't communicate that, and Davis can attack Morris in the post. Now the third time after a free throw, Davis was actually in at center, so Noah would have been guarding Davis anyways, but still, it's a good example of the value of having a center on Davis. Here, Davis catches it further out with Noah on him and doesn't really look to attack. And then on the fourth play after a free throw, Davis does look to post up Noah, and Noah is able to strip him. We don't need to go through all the plays, but I will show you this because later in the first half, the Lakers looked to counter the Clippers strategy. LeBron said, hey, if you're going to put Reggie Jackson on me, I'll just go to the post. And here LeBron does. He draws a double team and creates a decent look for Caruso. Anyways, while this adjustment didn't give the Clippers a huge advantage, I did think it was a smart one, and also it is worth noting that the Lakers didn't always go to a Davis post-up after free throws, particularly in the second half, they were much more likely to draw up a play, getting it in LeBron's hands. Moving on to what I've seen called the X-Switch, and first let's go over what the X-Switch is. So here, Curry is running off of a baseline screen and then a down screen on top. And instead of having Rondo chase Curry around the Boban screen, the Lakers will execute the X switch, where LeBron from the corner will switch out onto Curry on top, and Rondo will take LeBron's man in the corner. This is a good way to blow up a down screen in the middle of the floor, and LeBron has been executing it for years on whatever team he's been on, and here him and Delhi execute it. And it makes logical sense. The Cavs want to switch this screen with Dunleavy, but switching Mozgov out on Dunleavy 
creates a mismatch, so instead, by switching two perimeter players, Mozgov stays on the center. So yesterday, we saw the Clippers run the same play the Mavericks run. Here, Paul George starts on the baseline and then is going to use the down screen on top, and we see that LeBron is opening up and gearing up for the X switch. But the problem is, KCP lets George go back to the corner. Then KCP and LeBron have a conversation about the play, and what I'm sure LeBron told KCP is, yes, we were going to switch, but you can't get over anxious and let George go to the corner. Now, the second time the Clippers ran this play, the Lakers messed the X switch up again. Just watch J.R. Smith. This was actually a really funny play. So what happened was Danny Green kind of fell asleep. He should be X switching and taking George right here. And JR lets him know that, but it's too late, which forces Howard to take George, which leaves Zubots open, but LeBron is lurking and he saves the day. But in the second half, the Lakers finally got it right. The Clippers run the play and we see Green and LeBron execute the X switch and here, an extra advantage is with LeBron switching out onto George on top, now you're getting an elite on-ball defender against George. So I hope you guys are starting to see how this is really a chess game. And Doc Rivers, of course, isn't a bystander, so in the fourth quarter he called this after timeout set, which was a very similar play to the ones before, but this time George will run off a back screen first before getting the down screen from Zubot, and the change in setup makes it harder for Dion Waiters to execute the X switch. So that switch doesn't happen. George draws two, but nice job by Waiters to blow up the play on the weak side with a nice rotation. Still, I like the process from the Clippers, and also let's just enjoy this insane D by LeBron. Speaking of LeBron's defense, let's talk about it, because he played great defense during this game, and the thing is, he's guarded Kawhi much more in the last two matchups against the Clippers. He seems willing to take Kawhi on one-on-one -on -one instead of hiding on a Patrick Beverly, and it looks like he'll do this during their seven-game series if they meet in the conference final, and this could swing things for the Lakers, because when he dials in, there's no one like him. And with his on-ball defense, we also saw the influence of scouting. So what he did this game was largely shade Kawhi left. And when we look at the numbers, it makes sense why. On the season, Kawhi has driven to the right 418 times. And on those drives, his team has scored 1.07 points per chance. On the other hand, we see that he has driven to the left significantly less this season. And the Clippers score slightly worse when he does drive left. So Kawhi clearly likes going right and LeBron made sure he didn't get to his right hand. And it wasn't just LeBron, it was a team-wide priority to force Kawhi left, and here we see KCP jump on Kawhi's right shoulder. And by the way, this only bothered Kawhi to a certain extent. He had 28 points and was efficient doing so, and here we see with LeBron shading him left, Kawhi drives left and finishes. But still, LeBron in particular did a great job of playing to the tendencies, and here we see LeBron force Kawhi left, and when Kawhi tries to spin back right, LeBron is right there, not letting him get to that right hand. Terrific D by the GOAT. Also, LeBron's off-ball defense was excellent as well. Here for instance, on the baseline drive, this is a really good and precise rotation to the corner. And what's also unique, of course, is not only is he the Lakers point guard, but he also adds rim protection. Here on the drive, nice job at first, getting outside the charge circle and looking to take a charge. And then on the pass to Green, he knows what a good player would do in this spot, which is go for a reverse layup. But LeBron anticipates that and gets the block and the favorable no call. So, I hope you learned about some of the games within the game. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.